Hello! After a long winter, I am ready to start thinking about spring. So here we've got a little caterpillar in a jar, and I'm going to teach you how to make the caterpillar and the leaves that go along the little stick that's inside the jar for the caterpillar to climb up. So let's get started with the materials that are needed. So for the materials, it may seem like you're going to have a lot of materials needed, but everything is really easy to get. For the body of the caterpillar, I'm just using a lightweight three yarn. I'm using bright green, but you can use whichever color you would like for the body of your caterpillar. The next color is a different shade of green. That way the leaves are a little different than the body of the caterpillar, so it doesn't all blend together when you're looking in the jar. This is just a plastic jar that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. I have some polyfill, but because the caterpillar's body is so small, you can either use polyfill or just a little bit of extra yarn scraps you have laying around. It doesn't take much to fill the little body parts up. I picked up a stick from my backyard, so that's really something simple to get. And then for glue, I have E6000, but you can easily use hot glue or whichever kind of glue you would like to place the caterpillar on the stick and then the leaves on the stick as well. For the spots on the caterpillar, I'm just using some blue seed beads. And then to place the little seed beads onto the body of the caterpillar, blue thread, just something simple. Then there's also safety eyes and you don't have to use safety eyes you can always embroider the eyes on or just use felt. I have two needles a yarn needle and then a smaller needle for placing the beads onto the body of the caterpillar. So the last three things that you'll need is a 2.25 millimeter crochet hook which is really small but it'll help keep the size of the caterpillar down. And then we've got a pair of scissors and lastly a stitch marker and that's everything you'll need for the project. Let's start off with our cute little caterpillar's head and to do that we're going to make a magic ring. And I know that they may seem a little tricky to make but there's plenty of tutorials out there that's going to help walk you through the steps. Uh, we're going to make our magic ring with six single crochets inside. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we can take our tail and we're going to pull it closed, but we're not going to pull it super tight just yet because we don't want to make that first single crochet hard to get into when we start on our next round. So we've got our six single crochets in our magic ring and then we'll go on to round two. For round two, this is an increase round and we're going to increase from six stitches to 12 and to do that we're going to increase in each of these six stitches. So in the first stitch we're going to crochet two and the same for the other five stitches. And that'll Increase us to 12. So there we are. And it's 6, 8, 10, and our last increase will get to 12. And I know it can be a little difficult because these these stitches are, are pretty small with the size of yarn and the hook, so it can take a little work to get all the way around. But there we have our 12 stitches, and now we can pull this a, a little bit tighter in order to close that hole up. And so that makes it a little better, and I'll do a little bit more. Just makes it much smaller. And then we'll move on to round three. So we are ready to do an increase on round three from 12 stitches to 18. And we're just going to go ahead and increase in the first stitch. And then we're just going to single crochet in the next stitch. And then we will just go ahead 
two single crochets in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next. And we're just going to follow this pattern all the way around. And sorry if there's any changes. I had to re-record this and I'm just not sure what happened to my original recording, but that's gone. So I just wanted to quickly re-record this row so you can see how the increase from 12 stitches to 18 goes. There we go, and we are on our last increase. So two in this stitch, pop out the stitch marker, and then one single crochet. And so that gives us 18 stitches. And then we'll move on to rows four through six. Okay, we are all done with the increases, and so rows four, five, and six will just be single crocheting all the way around. So I'll get started with the first row of single crochets, and while I do this, I'm just going to go ahead and take my tail and start weaving that in. It's just been kind of hanging there, and I just want to kind of get that out of the way. But I'll do row four with you, and then once we're done with row four, I'll meet back up with you after we've all completed rows five and six. This is just the same thing, just single crocheting around. And this will start really making the head look like it's starting to form because as you go around, you're going to notice that the head starts to uh, kind of fold down and start looking more like a bowl shape. All right, let's just keep going. And again, even for me, it can be a little bit of a challenge getting into all these little stitches with such thin yarn and a small hook. So as we're going, you can start seeing it start to fold, form more of a bowl shape. Okay. We're just coming to the end of row four, and we have stayed at 18 stitches all the way around. And this is where a stitch marker really helps. I uh, just let you know where you started and stopped because it starts to all look the same after a while. Okay, so there is row four. Oops, let's just hop that back in there. Okay, there we go. No, <laughs> no, I missed part of that stitch. Let's try this. We're gonna back up one, go in there, and I think we got row four. Okay, there is row four, and I will meet back up with you after the end of row, uh, rows five and six. So we are doing great, and we are now getting ready to start row seven. And there's only two rows left. So we're gonna decrease from 18 stitches down to 12. And I'm gonna show you how I do my invisible decrease, but you can decrease whichever way works best for you. And then I'll show you the pattern to go from 18 stitches to 12. So let me first pop them. There we go, make sure the stitch marker's secure. So for my invisible decrease, in the first stitch, I'm gonna go through the front loop only, and then in the second stitch, I'm going to go through the front loop only. I'm going to pull the yarn through those two loops, and then I'm going to pull through the final two. In the next stitch, I'm just going to do a single crochet. Let me show you one more time. So I'm going to go through the front loop only, then in the next stitch, the front loop only, pull through those two front loops, and then pull through the two remaining loops on the hook. And then we'll just do a single crochet. And that's all it takes to do our invisible decrease. But like I said, go ahead and do whichever decrease works best for you. And then we'll just follow that pattern all the way around. Here we go. And I am just so excited to make this little caterpillar because I am in Minnesota and I am really ready uh, for spring leaves. 
uh, anything other than snow. I love the winter, but eventually I am just ready for a change in seasons. So here we are in our final decrease. Move the stitch marker out of the way. And then we will do our last single crochet. So here we are. And our next step is we're going to go ahead and uh, if you are wanting to add your safety eyes in, this will be a good, a good spot to get those placed and I'll show you how to do that next. So we're going to place the safety eyes and this is an optional step. There's always the choice of using felt or in, uh, stitching on with uh, needle and thread the eyes and just going with the embroidered look. But I'm going to go ahead and do safety eyes and I like to place those between rows 5 and 6. So I'm just going to try to pop these in and this may not be as easy as it is with other projects because everything's just so much smaller. All right, we got the first one in, and then I'm going to kind of just place that a little bit better. Then I'm going to skip a few stitches, and I think I'll go in here and try to pop these through. And these safety eyes, because the area is so small, take up quite a bit of space inside the head. And so we've got the safety eyes. And I will pop on the first back. Whoops, there we go. Try not to throw them around too much. And then we will pop on the second one. So like I said, it takes up with the safety eyes and the backing quite a bit of space in there. So there's um, still room for stuffing, but yeah, definitely fills up quite a bit of space. So we've got the eyes on and the last thing we're going to do is the final decrease and then we're going to go ahead and stuff and that's the head and that is the biggest part of the caterpillar. So everything from here on out will be much smaller and go a lot quicker. We have made it to our last row which is row 8 and we're going to decrease from 12 stitches down to 6. But before we start decreasing I want to get this head stuffed and it's going to take a little work because of the safety eyes, so we want to get the uh, filling right in between those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start stuffing the head, and I'll be right back with the head being uh, stuffed to pretty much the top of the stitches. So I'm working the stuffing into the head of the cat caterpillar, and I'm just taking my scissors and just kind of pushing the filling right into the space between the safety eyes just to go ahead and really get that round shape otherwise those uh, safety eyes really kind of have a, a way of misforming the head so I really want to pack that stuffing right in there so we'll just keep poking in and this can be a little time consuming but we'll get the head completely filled and then we'll go on to uh, do some more decreases so I've got this head packed in pretty tight with the stuffing and I really use the scissors to really push that in. But I didn't want to go too much above the stitches otherwise it makes it hard to do the decrease. And if we need more stuffing to give it that ball shape we'll just add as we decrease. So what we'll do is we'll start decreasing uh, two at a time and then we'll see how it goes and if we need to do more stuffing. So here is the first decrease and the second decrease. So let's take a look and I'm seeing that there's a gap right in there so I'm just going to take my hook out and just put a little more stuffing in that area. It shouldn't take a whole lot. And again, I'll just use my scissors to kind of fill in that spot. So for me, the head will be pretty firm. But since um, it's not really like a stuffed animal, and it's just going to be sitting on that stick, I don't need it to be really soft or cuddly. And this way it'll really hold its shape while it's on the stick. So there we go. And what I'll do is I will decrease 
two more and then see if there's a space for stuffing to go in so there's the third decrease there's the fourth and let's take a look so there's a little bit of space right there but I think I'm going to decrease one more hook out and I'm just gonna take a tiny little bit kind of roll it up in my fingers and see if I can put some more in there and the body uh, body pieces are much easier to stuff because you don't have to really work around those safety eyes and so they go much easier so I'm just gonna see if I can fit some more stuffing in there and I do recommend being really careful. It's probably not the greatest idea to be doing this with scissors, but that's just a kind of a habit I've developed. So there we go, and I got five decreases, and I see there's still plenty of room to go around for some more, so I'll just kind of keep decreasing until it's pretty much all closed up in that one. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a really long tail for sewing. And so not only is this going to close up the head, but it's also going to use, I'm also going to use this tail to sew all the body pieces on. And that way they'll all be one, uh, one set piece with this tail. So we're going to go ahead and close this a little bit up and then we'll start working on the rest of the parts. So I've got my yarn needle and I'm just going to go in and just kind of go straight through these little front loops on the remaining stitches. And then once I've kind of gone through and caught all of them, I'll just pull the tail tight and close that little spot up. And kind of shake the head a little bit and then just kind of weave the tail in through a few stitches and then I'm going to have the tail come out right about here to get it ready um, to sew on the body pieces okay so there is our little caterpillar head and he's all done. So let's move on to the body. And those are smaller, but they'll go pretty quick and much easier to stuff. So let's keep going. So we are now ready to make the body. And for the size of the caterpillar I'm gonna make, we're gonna make three little balls for the body. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the magic ring. And of course, you can make as many of these little extra pieces um, to make your caterpillar as long as you want. So I'm going to do a single crochet six times into our magic ring. And this is quite a bit like making the head, only not as many rows. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So I'm going to walk you through making the first body part and then you can go ahead and make as many as you want and then we'll go ahead and get everything put together. So for the first part we've got our magic ring with six single crochets in it and then we'll move on to round two and there is only five rounds for this one so it won't take long at all to get this body part made. We are on round two and we're going to do an increase and this will be our only increase round. So we're going to increase from six single crochet to 12 and we'll do that just like we did the head by going ahead and putting two single crochets in each stitch. So there's our first one with our increase and then we'll just go around placing two single crochets in all six stitches until we have 12. And that's the nice thing about the body parts. There's only one increase and one decrease. And they go really quick. 
and let's see, almost to the end. Let me count my stitches and see where I am. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm on my last increase. So there's eleven and twelve. Now I'll go ahead and pull this a little tighter to close up that hole, but we've got 12 single crochets all the way around and we're ready for round three. We are on round three and rounds three and four are just single crochets in each stitch around. So we'll just keep everything at 12. And while I'm working on round three, I'm just going to go ahead and start weaving in my tail and getting that out of the way. And so we are just going to go through round three together and then I will meet back with you after round four where we've done the same thing just one single crochet in each round and so after that we're just down to our final round which will be a decrease so these really go quick and like I said you can make as many as you want to make your caterpillar just as big as you want I'm just going to stick with making three and that just kind of works for the size of the jar I have. Okay, so we've got all 12 stitches. Well, almost. There we go. All 12 stitches in round three. And all we have to do is the same thing in round four. So I'll meet you back in just uh, a moment after we complete round four. Okay, we are at the end of round four, and this last round will be a decrease round. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease about three times. And once I get those three decreases done, I'm going to go ahead and start stuffing before the little entrance gets too closed. So we're going to just do three invisible decreases. Oh, almost got three done. Go back in. And there's our third invisible decrease. I'm going to pull the hook out and I'm going to take some of the stuffing and just kind of ball it up and just kind of poke with my scissors very gently right in there. There we go. And that gives us a start for our body. I think I'm going to just take this tiny little bit and roll this up and place it in there so it can kind of get firm and really hold its shape once we sew all the pieces together. Okay, so that should do a pretty good job. And let's go ahead and just decrease all the way around until it's just as decreased as it can be. And then we will sew the Last little part, oops, oh my goodness, this is getting so small. And so the last little part closed. And if you're noticing when you're going around that it could probably use just a little more stuffing, you can go ahead and just stop, which I think I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna take a little bit more stuffing and just kind of roll up a little ball and try to place that in there just to fill out the little body as much as possible. Again, very carefully, just kind of poking it in there and kind of just rolling the body around to see if I like it. And there might be just a little bit more room in the body for some more. And this should be about all I need. And just be very careful because you're working with some really small areas. Okay, so that's everything as far as the stuffing, at least until I do a couple more decreases and see if there's any changes I want to make. But I got a little more space to decrease and I know it can be kind of tight corners getting those last little decreases so you can always stop early and just oops <laughs> so closed 
which if I was thinking that's probably what I should be doing but I always like just to go a little bit further and make everything a little harder on myself than it has to be okay that is more than enough all right so I'm gonna take the hook out give myself a little bit of tail for sewing closed and I'll just do that right now and that will be the end of the first body part so I'll just do it like I did with the head just kind of grab the front loops of those remaining stitches and then I'll just pull everything closed and just kind of sew the tail in through some of the stitches just to get it nice and secure and we'll just use that long tail on the head to sew all of the pieces together and so there we go that is all it takes to make one of the little body parts and let me grab the head and as you can see they're quite a bit smaller but it'll all work out together once we get all the pieces made so I'm gonna go ahead and make two more of these you can make as many as you would like and then we'll go ahead and work on the last part which is the tail okay so we've got our head three body parts and we're going to get ready for the tail now the tail <laughs> it's it's small <laughs> and so um, you can always skip this your caterpillar will look cute even without it but I'm going to show you how to make the little tail if you want to have that added on so we're going to do our magic ring and instead of making six single crochets into the magic ring we're only going to do four and so we've got one two three and four so we'll pull our little tail and again we're not going to pull it too tight we're just going to get it so we've got four single crochets onto our hook and again there's only five uh, rows on this there's going to be one increase one decrease and two um, rows of just single crochet just uh, less stitches in each of these rows so we'll move on next to round two which will be increasing from four stitches to eight okay we've got our four stitches and we're going to start increasing and I admit that there's not a lot of room to work here, but once you get a couple of these increases into each of the stitches, you're going to find that you've got more to hold on to. So we've increased into the first stitch, and we'll increase by placing two single crochets into the second stitch. And two single crochets into the third stitch. And lastly, and I know there's not a lot to work with, but we'll get, come on, two single crochets in the fourth stitch, which will give us a count of eight single crochets all the way around. And that was our increase row. And then the next rows, three and four, will just be single crocheting eight all the way around. Okay, let's start single crocheting in one single crochet in each stitch around. There's one, two, three, four, and I'm going to grab up my tail and just start crocheting around that to kind of weave it in. Five. Six, seven, pop my stitch marker out, and make my last single crochet, which is eight. And I'm going to kind of turn this so kind of curled in on itself, but I'm going to turn it so everything's in the right direction. Now we're going to meet back up after round four, which is the same thing, just single crocheting eight all the way around. 
Okay, so we've got uh, two rows of just single crocheting, eight around, and we're ready to stuff. This will not take much stuffing, so we'll just break off a little piece, uh, kind of roll this up into a ball. I mean, you could even argue, does it even need stuffing? I'm going to go ahead and add some in anyway, but it will only take a tiny little amount. So I'll just kind of put some in, and whatever I get in will just be probably good enough, and I probably will just decrease all the way around till I can't decrease anymore, and then so close because that just doesn't need much. All right, so there's the stuffing. And then we can just decrease using the invisible decrease again. And you only have to do this, you know, four or five times. And you will be all set. And that is the tail. And that is also all of the body parts needed for your little caterpillar. Okay, so this will be my last decrease. It's just getting a little crazy. Okay, so I'm going to cut off some tail and try to see if I can thread. There we go. And let's just grab up those little stitches, front loops, just like we have with the head and the body parts closed and just kind of come on come through anywhere there we go and just kind of form into a little ball shape and that is it for the tail cut off the extra And there we go. We have all of the little body pieces. And so we will go ahead and next sew all the parts together and form the shape of our caterpillar. All right, we are ready to put everything together. And this is kind of the shape that I'm gonna try to go for when uh, sewing his body together. So it'll kind of just have that um, zigzag shape and we'll see how well this goes. Uh, so we're going to first start with sewing the head uh, to the first body part and how I have the yarn coming out is kind of at the lower point of the back of his head. And so I'm going to take the part of the ball that we decreased in and I'm going to go in first through there and just go straight through the body and pull that tight and kind of get a look and see how that works. And I think that will work well. Now at first it's going to be pretty floppy. So what I like to do is I like to do um, a few stitches going through the body and pulling tight. And then once I get you know, some stitches kind of going in and out of the body, uh, to make it a little tighter, I like to go back in up through the head kind of keeping, it's easier said than done, but kind of keeping everything, um, all the yarn hidden as much as possible, just to really keep everything secure so it's not too floppy. So I'll just go through and come through the head a little bit, whoops, body parts rolling all over the place, and then come back out. and then just go back into the body. And where I want to come out on the body is, um, when you're looking at it, up above the, um, the beginning of the magic ring. And so that just kind of keeps him a little more secure and he doesn't flop around so much. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to take the second body part and kind of come up a little higher to kind of give that zigzag shape. So I am now, just make sure I got enough yarn at the end, I'm going to come in and do the same thing. Go straight through the body and then just kind of 
look and see how that looks. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm going to come through this body a few times and then do the same thing like I did with the head just to kind of keep everything secure. And I'll just go back in to the second body. Oh, this is getting kind of hard to pull through. And then just pull everything tight and try to keep him in that shape. Okay. It's not hard, it just, um, trying to show it <laughs> can be a little, a little harder than the actual act of, of putting them all together. So I'm gonna see how that looks. So, yeah, so far so good. And now for this one, I'm gonna come down underneath the magic ring. I see a little stuffing poking through, so I'm just gonna kind of push that in. And then we're gonna take the third body piece and just repeat the same process. that needle to go through. I don't know what's got this one. Not wanting to go. There we go. Got it. And so he'll come down like that. There we go. Go into the last body piece, if I can. <laughs> Everything's working kind of tough. Okay, so there we go. Oh, I'm going through everything now. Okay. <laughs> He's cute. He's worth it. Okay, how are we doing? Yeah, yeah, he's kind of forming it. And let's keep trying. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Every project always looks so much different in my head and I think, oh, it's so easy. I, I can just show anybody how to do this. And then once I get on camera, that is a whole nother story. All right, ta-da, we've got <laughs> everything. We are in the last little piece, the tail. And so I'm going to come back up to the top, grab the little tail piece that took off on me. And it shouldn't take much to get this on there. There's hardly anything to it. Okay. Alrighty. And we are just about done and I will just put this through the tail one more time. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, he looks pretty good. Actually, come right out the very end. Cut the tail off. All right, I think we got them together. There we go. Okay, now that he's all put together, I put some spots on him just using some seed beads, and I think he came out pretty cute. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some leaves up so he'll have something on his stick to eat, and then we'll have some little extra leaves uh, that kind of scatter at the bottom of the, the little jar. So here's the style of leaf we're gonna make. But due to the size and how hard it is to see um, each of the steps that I do, I'm going to use a larger hook and then I'm also going to use some thicker yarn just for the sake of being able to see the steps a little easier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot. 
And then once we have our slip knot, we're going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then from here, we're going to go and work down both sides of this chain. So we've got our nine chains. And what we're going to do is we're going to work along both sides of the chain. So we're going to start on one side and work one stitch in each of the chain. And then we're going to turn our work and go one stitch back down the chain. So we're going to first start off working on the second chain from the hook. And we're going to put a slip stitch in that chain. In the next, we're going to do a single crochet. In the next chain, it'll be a half double crochet. We're also going to do another half double crochet. Next will be a double crochet. And then another double crochet. Another half double crochet and in this last chain a single crochet and that is the first side and then we'll turn our work and then work down the back side. Now we're ready to work on the other side of the chain and where we're going to be placing these stitches are in these little spots right along the uh, the edge of the chain. So there's little spots each as each chain goes down and that's where we're going to crochet into. The first stitch we're going to make is a single crochet and it's basically in almost the exact same stitch that we were um, we just did our last single crochet in. It's just right here basically the same stitch and so there are two single crochets in that stitch. One's just a little higher above the other. Then we're going to do a half double crochet in the next little gap and then a double crochet in the next and it's basically the exact opposite of what we did on the first side. Then we're going to do a double crochet another double crochet and as you go you'll be able to see those little gaps a little easier then we're going to do a half double crochet another half double crochet and the last one right there is a single crochet and then kind of right in the very tip you can do a slip stitch and that'll give you the shape of your leaf. Once you have the leaf done, you can chain one and then cut a decent amount of tail. You don't need too much. But we are going to remove our hook from that, uh, that chain and pull everything kind of tight. Then we're going to take our yarn needle and thread that on and one thing you may be able to see is right down the center there are some more gaps and what we're going to do is we're going to weave our tail in through those gaps to bring the tail back down to the bottom and so we'll just go ahead and bring that up and then just kind of work through those pull through and it kind of covers up the holes and then brings your tail back down. You can just kind of poke it through so it's right next to the original tail. Tie it in a knot. We can take the needle off. And that kind of holds everything in place. So when you go to put your leaves on the twig, you don't have a piece sticking out. It, everything will be right down here at the bottom and you can just cut the tail off and then when you go to glue you can just glue it right straight onto the the stick that you use for your caterpillar 
And so that's how you make the leaf. And you can make as many of these as you want. Uh, that way you can have your uh, stick that the caterpillars on have many leaves coming off of it and then scatter some down at the bottom of the jar with your caterpillar so it kind of looks like some of the little leaves fell off. So here is my caterpillar and I just hot glued him and the leaves onto my little stick and you may want to choose a different kind of glue because it's it's not the neatest of looks if you can kind of see where the hot glue sits but we've got him put onto the stick and we've got the leaves and I just added my leaves onto the little parts that kind of stick out. And then what we can do is once we've got him, we can just take our jar and then toss a couple of the little leaves at the bottom and then just place our little caterpillar in there. And you may have to work with the twig to get it just right or you may even have to kind of hot glue it in place or it just might stick in there just the way the twig bends but there you go that is your little caterpillar on a stick to kind of give you a little bit of spring even when there's still all the snow and cold weather but I thought it was a cute idea and there's so many other things you can do with this I mean, it doesn't have to be just a caterpillar you could crochet little ladybugs and put those in, or if you were really good, a grasshopper. I've never tried to crochet a grasshopper, but that would be another little option. Whatever the little bugs you would have caught when you were a child and put in a jar, yeah, you can just uh, make so many different little versions of this, and you don't have to worry about anything happening to them or poking holes in the lid. You'll be all set. I hope you like this tutorial, and I hope that you can make some of these for yourself. I'll put my Instagram uh, name into the description down below. So if you do make something, I would love to see this. Um, there's just kind of a cute idea and I think uh, little kids would love to get one of these. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a question in the comment down below and I'll get back to you to see if I can answer any of your questions if there was something that kind of was a little confusing along the way. But I hope you have a great day and thank you so much.